Okay, so basically what I'm trying to do, right, is I'm trying to find out uh, in the iPhone 14 Pro for the main camera, should I be using the main camera at 48 megapixels or 12 megapixels? So you have this option. Okay, so uh, in the latest iPhone 14 Pro camera, uh, this applies to the Pro Max camera as well. Okay, so they're using a quote Bayer pattern sensor, using pixel binning. Okay, four pixels are combined to uh, give you one one pixel so that uh, as a result, you will get uh, better quality in uh, low light, okay, supposedly. Okay, so uh, just to share with you, okay, these are the specifications from uh, dpreview.com. Okay, so the iPhone 13 Pro, the previous sensor, has a size of 7.6 by 5.7 mm. Okay, as a... Uh, F stop number of 1.5, okay, and then 26 mm focal length. In the new iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max uh, main camera, uh, the focal length is now 24 wider at 24 mm, okay. But uh, the F stop has suffered a little bit, okay. It's actually worse than previously, okay. F 1.78, not by much, thankfully, okay. Then the sensor size is actually bigger at 9.8 by 7.3 mm. Okay, so I've actually uh, used Photoshop, you know, to, to create the size, to recreate the size. Okay, so you can see iPhone 13 Pro main camera is 7.6mm by 5.7mm. Okay, and then the new camera is uh, bigger at 9.8mm by 7.3mm. So by some uh, simple calculation, it's about 60% uh, larger. Okay, so in the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max, you can actually choose the Pro Raw resolution. Okay, in order to get the highest uh, image quality, you have to use Pro Raw. Okay, so you can see here by turning on Pro Raw, you can uh, retain more information dynamic range in the file. Okay, so uh, under the Pro Raw resolution, you can choose between either 12 megapixel or 48 megapixel. Okay, when you're Capturing photos at 12 megapixel, the file size is approximately 25 megabyte. Okay, on the other hand, 48 megapixel will give you a uh, three times larger file at 75 megabytes. Okay, bear in mind that the resolution is actually four times higher. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the camera tests that I've done. Okay, so okay, so this is the uh, the first shot. Okay, and uh, on the left you have the 12 megapixel. Okay, so I've I've uh, selected the option 12 megapixel. Then on the right is a uh, Take captured at 48 megapixel. Okay, both in Pro Raw. Okay, I've tried my best to keep the ISO and shutter speed similar. So this is the 100% view of the 12 megapixel versus the 48 megapixel. Okay, so as a photographer, right, uh, you have probably two options. Okay, the first option is to capture your photos at 12 megapixel in Pro Raw if you want the highest uh, quality possible. Okay, so uh, in, in this case, the pixel binning will be applied. Okay, and so it's supposed to work better in low light situation. On the other hand, okay, we you can also choose the 48 megapixel option. And then for, uh, you can resize it to 12 megapixel. Okay, so uh, supposedly you will get a sharper image okay, by resizing it down to 12 megapixel. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, let's do a quick comparison. Okay, so you can actually see that the 48 megapixels, right? You can see over here, uh, the word road, okay, is actually more natural. I would say better defined. Okay, on the other hand, the 12 megapixel version, you can see there's a bit of uh, too much contrast. Over here, the mesh is also seems to be slightly better uh, defined. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, another area of the photo. Okay, this is actually from the same photograph. Okay, but I cropped to 100% view of a different area. Okay, so you can see in the 48 megapixel, right? If the highlights area, okay, you can see over here the top left. Okay, you can see the highlights. Okay, it's actually clearer, better defined. Okay, on the other hand, for the 12 megapixel, right? You can see it feels a bit uh, less well defined. Okay, so... Um, my first impression is that the 48 megapixel when resized to 12 megapixel, right, it will give you sharper image. 
okay, when there's more light. Okay, now how about the shadow? If you look at the, the shadow, by the way, try to change your screen brightness to 100% so that you can see the shadows better. Okay, so uh, over here, the uh, you can see that for the 12 megapixel, the shadows are actually a bit brighter and there are more details retained as compared to the shadows in the 48 megapixel besides to 12 megapixel. Uh, this is also an uh, image of my headphone okay, in another area, okay, 100% view crop. Okay, so you can see over here that uh, the Again, the, the shadows are better uh, defined. You can see, you can still see a bit of dust. Okay, you can see more details. On the other hand, Apple seems to have applied uh, more noise reduction in the shadows area. Okay, over here you can see in the 12 megapixel version, you can see that the tissue box over here uh, is better defined. Okay, so this is this is not the, the sunlight is coming from the right. Okay, so you can see here, this is a bit of a shadow area. Okay. Much more well defined, okay, wherever the words wherever you are is, is uh, clearer than compared to the 48 megapixel when resized to 12 megapixel. Okay, there's also a bit better contrast in the in my Apple TV remote. Okay, as compared over here. Okay, then the other uh, area of interest, right, is the shadows. Okay, so this is the shadows of the tissue box and you can see that the shadows is actually better defined compared to the 48 megapixel version. So again, I, I suspect a bit of more noise reduction has been applied in this uh, shadow areas. In the last image, this is a, a chair. Okay, it's under indirect sunlight. Okay, it's under shelter. Okay, so um, you can see that the 48 megapixel when we side to 12 megapixel is uh, very sharp. You can see the fabric very well defined. Okay, very sharp. You can see over here. Okay, it's also uh, looks more natural and uh, well defined. Okay, on the other hand, uh, the 12 megapixel seems a bit slightly better contrast. Okay, un but unfortunately, there's a bit of more problem. You can see the more problem here over here as well. Okay, so it affects the the quality. On the other hand, the 48 megapixel doesn't suffer for any more problem. Okay, on uh, having said that, right, I mean, uh, this is uh, viewed at 100%. So when, you know, when you try to view the image at uh, 100%, you will probably not notice any more problem. Okay, so I think in most cases, it's not really an issue. Okay, so in conclusion, I think I would uh, personally prefer to go with the 12 megapixel, okay, because there's something that I uh, I didn't say earlier. Okay, when you're capturing image at 48 megapixel, right, there's actually a processing lag of around 2 seconds, okay, so you have to like wait for around 2 seconds before you can actually view the photo uh, in, the cap in the photo album. Okay, whereas on the other hand, when you're capturing at 12 megapixel, right, the result is the most uh, instantaneous, the processing is the most inst instantaneous. Okay, so uh, another two uh, benefits of the 12 megapixel mode is uh, better low lights, as you can see from my camera test. And also, uh, when it's at 12 megapixel, the file sizes are smaller, 25 megabyte. Okay, so you can, your iPhone, you know, can, uh, can store three times as many photos as uh, using the 48 megapixel mode. Okay, so uh, how about you? What is, is your preferred option? Maybe you want to note down in my comment below. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope this has been uh, helpful for you.